All right, today I'm going to show you how we've ramped up our crayfish baby production to new dizzy heights on an absolute shoestring budget. This basic setup is going to take our production to, on average, 20,000 crayfish babies per year, uh, but it could take it up to the dizzy heights of about 40,000. And the cost that's involved for this complete setup is just $20. It's so simple to do and it works. We've been doing it for a while on a small scale. We've now ramped it up. So I'm gonna show you what we're doing and then hopefully it'll answer a few questions that you've been firing to us and maybe you can implement a few of these things that we're doing. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize to you for the hum hum noise in the background that you can probably hear. It's just that we've got the air pump running and I wanna demonstrate uh, how we've got the air stone set up for each tank that we've got here. The setup that I'm gonna show you today is purely for hatching out your pregnant crayfish. So the, the females that are all buried up, we put them into these, well, we've got nine tanks here and we've got a 10th tank there, which is a little bit bigger. So starting off with the cost guys, uh, we currently pay 20 baht per tank. This one of course would be a little bit more expensive, but you don't have to have that one. You could just have another one of these to take it up to 10. And I'll explain why. So there's 200 baht straight away. Our little air pump, which we've had over a year now, still going strong, lovely little piece of kit. Uh, that's approximately 200 bar. We got that off Lazada. We also purchased additional pipe work, connectors. So we've got three-way connectors. Further along, we've got some four-way connectors where required. Um, we've also got these little attachments to help regulate the flow. So every tank setup has got an air stone in there. Now red claw crayfish don't need a lot of oxygen. They can survive quite happily in low oxygen environment. But of course, you wanna keep that water nice and healthy. So we pump these tanks all with a little bit of air. So we've got 10 tanks, including this big green one, which I'll explain in a moment, all running off that. So that works out at 20 baht per tank for the air. The next thing that I'd like to show you is this aquatic pond weed that helps oxygen, oxygenate the water as well. Uh, but as the crayfish grow, they like to eat that. That's one of their favorites. Uh, we get a huge bag of this, which costs 100 baht, and that's more than enough to do 10 tanks. Because we bought it in bulk, we've used about half of it, and the rest of it is in another tank behind me. This isn't included in the cost breakdown though. So here, the pond weed that we had left over, we're just propagating it and growing it on. It grows very, very quickly. As long as you haven't got little snails in here or little crayfish nibbling on it, it does very, very well. So it's in half shade, half sun, and it seems to love it. We've got a few little guppies in here. Can't actually see them at the moment, but they keep the mosquitoes down. So you have no mosquito larvae in here. I would say for a tank this size, you only need about three or four. So there's your pond weed that you won't have to buy again. The other thing that you'll need is a little bit of Pipe work. We just use old pipe work that's left over from projects here on the farm. One very quick tip for you guys. When you introduce a little bit of pipe work, make sure it's not touching or nearly touching the side of your tank. Nighttime, these crayfish are very, very active hunting for food. And if you leave anything by the side here for them to climb on, they'll be out of your tank. I know some of you guys are growing crayfish out here. Uh, some of you are actually just starting out they're classed as a non-native, potentially invasive species out here. So uh, make sure you've got your certification to, to say that you can grow these safely, uh, but make sure that they don't get into the local uh, water systems. Although Thai people do like to eat this sort of food, uh, it could quickly get out of hand if they get into a water system, which, which doesn't regularly dry out in the dry season. These, these breed very, very quickly if the conditions are right. Another quick tip is don't put too much of your pond weed in. Again, if you put too much in right, and it gets to the side of your tank, then the crayfish will just stand on that and climb out. If you're super concerned about that sort of thing, just buy a deeper tank. This sort of tank would be perfect. We use this for the crabs because they actually climb and stand on each other and get over the side. So that's a good depth tank. But I think these are about 90 bar or 100 bar. The good thing about the crayfish, they don't need a lot of water. You know, as long as they can stay wet and uh, submerge when they want to, then you're okay. Don't, don't top these tanks right up to the top or to a couple of inches to the top. They can stand on their tail and then once they get the claws onto something or over the sides, they'll just pull themselves out easy. 
Just be aware also, if your air stone is touching the side, potentially that's something for them to get purchase on and pull themselves up. What we are going to be doing next, just to make sure we've eradicated all potential escape routes, uh, we're going to put a, a small bar or piece of wood all the way along there, and then we're going to suspend our air stones off that. The next thing, which is probably in my book the, the most important thing, is what you actually put in there. And I don't mean crayfish, obviously you've got to put crayfish in there. But what do you put in there to feed them? If you get this wrong, your crayfish will either eat all their babies, or they won't hatch, or they'll hatch and they'll die within a few days. And then she'll eat. Now when you collect your buried up females, they're still potentially going to have quite a few weeks before they start hatching out their eggs. So you do have to make sure that you give them the right food. Now we only give this stuff to our pregnant females or the females that are well, what we class as our brood stock. It's a sinking pellet, it's very very small but it's high in protein and that's the sort of thing that they need to help them shed their, their skin or their shell rather or their exoskeleton. If your crayfish aren't shedding or molting regularly they're not growing, they haven't got enough calcium uh, so it's gonna, your egg production is going to suffer quite a lot. It's a, it's a good yardstick, no shedding or molting no babies. What we found the best way to feed these is, first of all, wait till it's dark. As I say, your crayfish will be more active. You sprinkle these lightly, just like a, I don't know, a, a good pinch of salt to your cooking, that sort of thing. Sprinkle it around them. They should start eating it straight away. The next evening, go and have a look. If there's any left at all, do not put any more in there. If it's all gone, put the same again. You can up it if you want, but crayfish, if you, if you overfeed them and you get old food sitting on the bottom, you'll get like a scum and it'll be all anaerobic and you can lose your, you can lose your brood stocks quite easily and also the babies, of course. Now, as we start approaching the hatching time, you'll normally notice that the, the, the females, they go off the food just a little bit. It'll be a gradual thing. So it might be that you've been just given that pinch of food every one or two evenings and it's always disappeared, then a little bit will be left, and then the next day a lot of it is left and that sort of thing. So, but they will, they will still eat, but what you find that they do is, is something totally, totally different. I've got to kick my flip-flops off. The missus gets all upset if I walk up here in, in my shoes. Now here's one that I think demonstrates it quite well. What, what the girls start to do as they're approaching hatching time, they'll start to pull the pond weed in there, but it's not just that. They're pulling this algae in there as well, and they use their walking legs, the really thin legs down the side of their bodies. They'll pull up that and hold it underneath their abdomen where they're holding their, their eggs. As the eggs start to hatch, they've got that ready meal waiting for them there. But it's got to be the right algae. If you use detritus on the, on the bottom of, uh, say, our big tank, I'll just show you that. Well, there's a lot of walking around today, isn't it? Got to get my flip-flops back on. Right, in our big tank here, You'll see on the bottom, oh yeah, the big boy's there. That's his hidey hole in there. You can just see his, the red flashes on his claws. Down here, there's a little bit of algae on the bottom, but you'll, I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. I don't want to risk submerging it, guys. But you can just see this stuff. That's a lot finer than the algae that we've got in the tanks. This sort of stuff is, is waste, really. Yeah, we regularly clean this out. We've got a few more weeks yet. It's just starting to build up a little bit now. That's not what you want in your tanks. What you want in your tanks is what we're cultivating over here. Some people think that you've got to, you've got to feed the baby crayfish. You, you can do, but hang on a minute. I need my net, don't I? If you're going to go down that route, you need to know what you're doing and you need to get it spot on because baby crayfish die very very easily you don't want to go through all this hard work and then you get up in the morning and you've just lost a, a brood hatch of well up to 800 babies can just be gone overnight so we we try to use nature same as most things on the farm rely on mother nature it generally gets it right okay so we've got this tank which looks absolutely howling during the daytime you'll see these clumps of algae that come up to the top I'm just going to take a sample from the bottom. Toon's got all her little glass shrimp in here, so I don't want to catch too many of them. But you can see the difference in this stuff. Let's get your shadow out of the way, Lee. It's like 
it's clumpy but fluffy. That's the stuff that you want. Uh, there's all sorts of zooplankton in there and that's what they feed on. It also, because it fluffs up and separates, it gives lots of surface area and little hidey places for young crayfish to hide. So I'm gonna show you how this looks in the big green tank that we've got some baby crayfish growing at the moment. Let's just turn the air stone off a second. Right, my dear. That's the girl we got out of our grow out pond, our first one that we captured the other night uh, that's, that's buried up. As some of you will know, we've had some teething problems getting our girls to uh, bury up uh, outside. In the tanks, no problem at all, uh, but out in the, uh, the, the main part of the farm where we've got our grow out pond, uh, yeah, she's our first one after making a few tweaks. So thanks to some of you that have given us some advice and it looks like we've got it cracked now. Right, on to the babies. Now in here, I would say there's about three or 400 baby crayfish. In the daytime, you won't see them. If you're ever unsure whether you've got babies or how many babies you've got, then just come out nighttime and put a torch on and they'll be all over the surface of this and a lot around the sides there. Plus there'll be hundreds and hundreds that you can't see as well. So you can see here, it's like a, well, I don't know how you describe it. It's like a candy floss almost. But you can see there's all individual pieces. Let's see if I can get it a bit closer without getting too blurry. Yeah, and they will just stay in there eating and hiding all day long. I know what you're sitting there thinking, some of you. Lee, they're all going to eat each other. Yes, they do eat each other. There's no getting away from it. It's just nature. It's just keeping crayfish. That's what they do. But the first couple of weeks of their life, all they're bothered about is eating that zooplankton. After that, you can start introducing a little bit of feed. Uh, but once they get to sort of like a couple of centimetres in length, you need to come up with an idea of, of, of how you're going to not necessarily separate them, uh, but give them that environment where they're not going to predate on each other too much. If you think you're not going to lose any crayfish through predation, where they, you know, they're highly cannibalistic, uh, you need to have a rethink, guys. You, you will lose quite a few. The only way you're not going to is if you uh, stock at a very, very minimal level. To give you an idea of that, in the tank down here behind me, this is where we keep our main brood stock now, uh, we've got 15 girls in there and two boys. We can't remember the last time one was eaten. The only time you'll see them eating each other is when they're eating the, sh the shell that's been shed. So because the stocking levels are very, very low, just let me get my flip-flops on again. And there's lots of hiding places for them. They love their pipe works, the, the big crayfish do. Not so much our, well, I call them crayfish condominiums. They're for the smaller ones. But if you give them their own space, make sure they've got plenty of food. Uh, they're as happy as Larry. You'll see them, what I call jousting. One will be the, the entrance of the pipe work and they'll just have their claws poking out like I showed you that, that big male before. Uh, as one just comes around and has a nosy in the pipe, they just get a slap in the face and then they sod off. You know, it's, it's quite hard for one crayfish to get another crayfish out of the pipe. Even if that crayfish is a little bit smaller and the one outside is bigger and trying to bully them, uh, you imagine trying to get into like a, a small opening of a pipe and you've got claws smashing you in the face. Most of them just, just move on. Now I do get asked a few questions from time to time regarding the water quality, temperature, you know, levels of calcium, the feed and all that sort of stuff. I have to admit, we're very, very lucky here. As most of you know, we live in Thailand. We don't have to worry about the temperature. The only time it seems to have an adverse effect on them is when we do get a, a cold snap. So uh, the coldest time of year for us is round about, I don't know, November to January, something like that. But it's, it's still not particularly cold. But it's cold enough to slow the metabolism down of the crayfish. They'll stop shedding and they'll go off the food as well. So just hold back on the feed and you, you just wait for the temperature to pick up again and then, then start introducing the feed. You'll see them, it's, it's, it's such a noticeable difference. If you, if you keep regular tabs on your crayfish every day, it goes from one extreme to another. One day you can hardly get them with the, with the, with the net because they're so fast. Uh, and then when it's super cold, you just put your hand in and pick them up if you're not scared. As far as the feed goes, we've come across a feed that the crayfish like, 
and it seems to work. Like I said, they're, they're all shedding regularly. Um, they're, they're almost constantly pregnant when we keep them in the tanks. Okay, not so much in the, the ponds, but that is improving now. So we're happy with that. We are coming to the end of it. It does last a long, long time. Uh, I can't remember where we got it from. I know it was off Lazada, but soon I'll have to look into her account and try and source where it was from. It, was, it wasn't particularly cheap, but it does last quite a long time. You know, as far as calcium goes and temperatures goes and your protein and your feed goes, you're just going to have to figure that out for yourselves, guys. And I'm not trying to dodge questions there. You know, everyone's temperatures are going to be different. Uh, everyone's feeds are potentially going to be different. The water quality is going to be different. You know, at last resort, we use our borehole water. Uh, but every time we get the possibility of using rainwater, that's what we use for topping up our tanks big tanks as well as the small tanks water changes again it will depend on on your water the location how much sunlight you get the big tank behind us uh, we drain and clean it once every two months ish uh, our what we've nicknamed the jig tank this was our first ever breeding tank we clean that out about once every six months this is a, currently it's about three inches deep We've got 10 girls in there and two boys. Although there is detritus on the bottom, it stays crystal clear all year round. I think it's, I think it's to do with the shallow depth of water and, and so much water hyacinth in there. There are a lot of snails in there as well. And then we've got a final tank over here, which has just got more breeding stock in here. This is sort of like a different type of algae. Uh, and I can only suggest it's because it's, it's in half light, half shade, and there's big crayfish in here. So it's it's fluffy, but it's dark like the detritus. So whether it's a bit of both, I really don't know. Uh, but the water quality stays nice and clear. Uh, again, we haven't lost any crayfish in here. I think it's it's just really keeping tabs on it. And if something dies, whether it's the babies or, or you, heaven forbid you lose a, you know, a, a mature adult crayfish, then you've got to get on top of it straight away. But normally it's, it's the water. If it's not the water, have they been fighting? It's pretty much easy to, to tell if they've been fighting because the one that lost will be half eaten. So after making a few fine tweaks to our setup here, for the sake of $20, the potential for our maximum crayfish production has gone through the roof. Now, at, at the moment, Tuna's nipped into town and she's gone to get another nine tanks. The reason being, let me put the air back on, is we've got another we've got another old air pump so we're going to order another one of these sets of pipe work with all the little attachments they're about 150 by you get 10 air stones lots of hose we've got loads lots of hose left over and then the three-way and four-way connectors and the uh, the flow adjusters so for the sake of another nine tanks 180 bar uh we're getting another what <laughs> capacity of another 20,000. And I've taken these numbers as an average. You know, a mature female red claw crayfish lays between three and 800 eggs per brood. The amount of broods per year, depending on your setup and conditions, is three to five, even with my rubbish maps, and it might be incorrect. If you took the maximums of those, uh, you're looking at about 40,000 babies per year. That's for 10 tanks. It's a lot of barbecues, isn't it? <laughs> we are officially selling juvenile crayfish and adult brood stock as well. The brood stock fall into two categories. Uh, ones that are full size, uh, fully mature, uh, and they, they can lay up to 800 eggs, the girls can. Uh, the other ones are old enough to be buried up. So they're old enough to become pregnant, uh, but they're not quite full size. So you might get a brood size of, I don't know, two, three, four hundred, something like that. Emails in the description below if you're interested. Just drop us a line. At the end of the day, if you want to just grow crayfish for fern, I, I think they're a fascinating creature. You know, maybe you want to set up a, a full filtration pump setup, you know, make it really ornate. I mean, ours is pretty much functional here. Then they are, I think they're a stunning creature. You know, when you get the, the, the nice clear water and uh, some good, good lighting on there, uh, they're like an iridescent blue with the, the red flashes on their, on their claws. That, well, that's for the males. You know, they, they are a stunning creature. If you just want to grow them for, for your own food at home, 
Wow, it's just fantastic. They're, I don't think there's there's much better tasting things that you could put on a barbecue than than yabbies. They are fantastic eating. And then of course, you know, you can you can sell some. The only thing that I'd say is Thais, generally speaking, tend to go for the the big freshwater shrimp in the markets. But you know, less and less people are, are being able to afford those. And at the moment, where we are, they're three hundred baht a kg. Well, if you if you gave me a taste test between these these big freshwater prawns and a crayfish, I as well as I would dare say many other people would would go for crayfish every single time. To me, it's it's not even close. A uh, crayfish is like a nice, it's it's sweet and creamy and a more delicate flavour than than these big prawns, these big shrimps. Sometimes these big shrimps can the the the, the smells a little bit. A little bit strong for my liking. I do like them, don't get me wrong, but they're, they're nowhere near as good for me. So grow your own food. It's what it's all about these days, isn't it? In these uncertain times, guys, to have a food source like this, which costs almost nothing to maintain, apart from that little bit of feed, everything else is just scraps for hours. It's an incredibly cheap food source to grow and keep. Who knows? This It might become very, very important in the near future. Okay, I'm going a little bit away on a tangent as I normally do. It's supposed to be just about setting up your breeding tanks, but I am very passionate about these. And uh, if you're not passionate about it, don't do it. There's no point, is it? It'll just be hard work. Do something you enjoy. Cheers then. If you'd like more information about our crayfish here on Paul Pang Farm, check out our website. The link is in the description and there's a section in there specifically on our crayfish. Who knows what the future holds? Maybe we need to contemplate having a, a few more of these things in our armory at home, you know, as well as a shotgun to scare everyone away that wants to come and steal all our... I, oh, I won't put that in.